Today in the news, you better strap up because we got a wild 2021 coming our way. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Nvidia. And folks, things are bad. If you were expecting Q2 of 2021 to at least to bring about a small relief in the silicon shortage, you will be sorely disappointed. Nvidia just created a blog post titled First Quarter Fiscal 2022 Revenue Tracking Above Outlook. In it, Colette Cress, Nvidia's CFO, was quoted as saying, overall, demand remains very strong and continues to exceed supply while our channel inventories remain quite lean. We expect demand to continue to exceed supply for much of this year. So they expect the shortage to continue for quite a while. Not only that, but obviously with Nvidia's constant expansion into different markets like CPUs and stuff, I mean, we saw everything at GTC, they're gonna need more allocation from either Samsung or TSMC or whatever other fab comes up. And of course that will spread the silicon shortage even thinner. And now to shit on your parade even more, the punches just keep on coming. There was one player in the game that we thought was safe, that was Intel. Unfortunately though, it looks like they're in a similar boat. When Intel launched their new Rocket Lake processors, we weren't necessarily amazed by the performance. They were hot, consumed a lot, etc., etc. But because Intel has been very good at keeping products in stock, heck, I bought an 11400 a couple of weeks ago, we were happy that there would be some competitive CPUs on store shelves. Well, that statement just went out the window. While some sites are reporting that Intel is going to have a wafer shortage, that's just plain wrong. They're actually gonna have a substrate shortage. The substrate, on the CPU at least, is the green part of the chip. It's a sophisticated and miniature PCB, like the traces are extra small, where the actual die sits. It's basically its connection interface for the CPU to interact with the rest of your system. Now, the problem is the insulating film that goes on the substrate. It's called Agile. Ajinomoto Buildup Film, ABF, and it's only made by one company, Ajinomoto Fine Techno Co. So they make the stuff and then they send it to one of the three big substrate producers in Taiwan, Unimicron Technology, Nanya PCB, and Kinsus Interconnect Technology. And that's where the issues lie. They're experiencing yield issues with their products right now, especially for high-end offerings that are used in CPUs and GPUs. Not only is there a manufacturing problem, but major chip makers like Intel, AMD, Nvidia, and Samsung, even Huawei, etc., are offering higher prices trying to secure ABF substrate capacity for 2021, but the demand obviously is continuing to outstrip supply. While Intel has historically been better than most at managing their supply chain, they just started warning key partners that there will be a substrate shortage in Q2, and those shortages will hit Rocket Lake hard, especially the Core i5s and Core i7 models since production of the higher margin Core i9 models will be prioritized. By the way, Intel, that's the dumbest thing I've heard. Your i9s are trash, just make cheap i5s and i7s. They're the real deal if you care about consumer, but clearly you don't. Now, of course, that's only for the mainstream market. What they're actually doing is prioritizing their big money-making enterprise parts like the upcoming iSleek Xeon server processors. So basically, the lesson here is pretty simple. Go out and buy it now. Because once the initial first quarter supply of Rocket Lake chips runs out, expect prices of Rocket Rocket Lake processors to rocket to the moon. And then you'll probably see Comet Lake prices increase too. So what if you wanted to game this year? Well, we got everyone's most hated and loved VR headset getting an update, the Oculus Quest 2. Now, a few months ago, the company updated the Quest 2 with a 90 hertz mode for smoother and less puke inducing game experience. Let me remind you that at the launch, the Quest 2 ran at 72 hertz maximum. Anyways, we got 90 hertz a couple of months ago with a tease that 120 hertz mode could be possible. At the time, people thought that the Oculus rep who mentioned 120 hertz was talking about a possible Quest 3. Well, guess what? Here it is. Yep, Oculus just announced that a 120 hertz mode will be available for the update V28 for the headset. Not only that, but PC wireless streaming will also be possible in the near future. 
That's freaking insane. At 120 hertz, this makes it pretty close to the Valve Index's 144, which may I remind you, cost a good grand and requires setting up light boxes for tracking and a cable to the PC. The only problem here is obviously the fact that Facebook is Facebook and it wants all of your data, so yeah. By the way, if you own a VR headset or are looking towards buying one, here are my favorite games, Robo Recall and Something Arena. That game, freaking made me jump so many times towards the disc to try and catch it and I like punched the ceiling or something like that. Anyways, um, go check them out. And that's pretty much it for the catch up guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here, to subscribe to the channel, stay frosty my dudes and I'll see you on the next one.